So this is a video I've been wanting to make for a little while and it's all about this. The SM58 as a vocal mic and how often it's being used completely incorrectly. Have you ever been to a live show or seen photos or images of people in a recording studio holding this microphone like this? singing into it this rap or metal style. 100% your favorite rapper or hip hop artist or metal singer or punk rock singer or could be anyone really has been photographed using this microphone in this particular manner, which is often referred to as cupping the mic. And you know, it can be sometimes done like this, can be sometimes done just with one hand group. Either or, it's often referred to as cupping. So today I'm gonna to go over four reasons on why you might not want to cup the mic ever, ever again. <laughs> because you'll find out in this video, it doesn't make it sound better. And in fact, it's not only making things sound worse, it's actually creating a bunch of other issues as well. So stay tuned for that. Now I've seen a lot of discussion about cupping the mic, whether you should do it or not on YouTube videos online. And shockingly, I've seen videos where people say this is okay or completely misunderstand what it is about cupping the mic that actually damages the sound quality of the audio going into it. So really, we need to dive into the science on how this microphone really works and kind of debunk a bunch of myths and honestly, some complete bullshit and what cupping the mic really does. So the first reason why you shouldn't cup a microphone really ever is that when you cup a microphone, you are effectively covering the back of the microphone. And when you do that, you are covering this grill part of the microphone here. It's like an intake for the sound waves. As sound waves travel in and hit the diaphragm, they collapse against the microphone and come in through the back of this grill. And the sound waves hitting the front and the back at the same time creates a kind of phase cancellation that then results in this microphone being a cardioid pickup pattern. So what happens when we cover that grill? Well, I'll tell you now, it makes this microphone now omnidirectional. This is a microphone originally intended for live studio use and also live performance use. Now, if this becomes omnidirectional and I'm holding it like this, it is now gonna have a bunch of issues that we'll talk about as our number four issue in this video. So the first reason you shouldn't cup a mic is that it makes this cardioid dynamic mic omnidirectional. Now the second reason that you shouldn't ever cup the mic is that basically it changes the frequency response. So when you cup the mic and you cover the rear of that grill on the microphone, you are also changing the frequency response of the microphone itself. So it goes from being a microphone that looks like this with a smooth kind of low end and then a nice kind of rise in the highs to something that is much more boosted in the mid range. And if you're boosting in that one to 2K mid range in a vocal, we should all know what that sounds like. It starts to sound a bit like this. <laughs> and you know, being that my accent is quite nasal, that can be bloody disastrous in an Australian accent in particular. So look, if you're gonna cut the mic, first off, it's gonna make your mic not work properly because it's now Omni. Second of all, it is now boosting all those horrible mids drastically by five to six dB or more. And that is going to make this microphone sound completely different frequency wise. Now the third reason why you should never ever, ever cup the mic is that going on that frequency response change it now makes this microphone, which has a very specific tailored frequency response in those lows and highs. That frequency response is tailored for vocals. In a live scenario, you're now changing that frequency response to have a mid boost, which means it is not really a frequency response that is flattering to the human vocal. So, therefore, your microphone now sounds completely atrocious. And that would be my third reason. Never ever cut the mic because it just makes it sound like complete shit. <laughs> and I mean, those three should be enough. You've now made your microphone 
not behave in the way it should at all frequency wise. It is now in an omnidirectional pattern and that leads me to our fourth and final reason why you should never cut the mic is that if you cut the mic and it, this microphone has now become omnidirectional, that means that you are now gonna be picking up frequencies not just from the front as this mic is originally designed to do, but it is now picking up frequencies from behind the microphone as well, which in a live scenario should be a bloody obvious problem because there are usually monitors in this direction and now you are going to increase the chance pretty drastically of feedback, okay? So if you've been to a live show and your favorite artist is cupping the mic and all of a sudden it sounds bad and they are complaining about the feedback problems that they are having on stage, this is probably due to their incorrect microphone technique. So let's just recap for a second. Cupping the mic, first of all, changes this microphone from cardioid to omni. Second of all, it creates a drastic boost in the mid-range frequency response of this microphone. Thirdly, it therefore just sounds quite atrocious because there's this huge mid-range bump now exaggerated in the microphone itself. And fourthly, you greatly increase the chance of feedback in a live setting or in a studio recording setting, say you were doing, you know, something, even just a demo in a recording setting, you are now picking up the room itself instead of rejecting frequencies from the rear axis of the microphone as is designed. So, are you going to cup your mics? I've had this discussion with many artists just for them to go back on stage and continue to cup the mic. And why would they do that? out of habit or because they don't really understand the seriousness of what is going on or just out of inexperience or whatever. And look, all we can do is try and spread real information about how our equipment works and then, you know, hopefully people take that on board. But if not, that's okay too. But that's just a quick one for today. Hopefully you guys get a lot from it. As always, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment sections down below and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com. I'll catch you soon.